Hello then, folks, and welcome to a roundtable of Football Manager YouTubers. I'm joined by some of your favourites. Jack Work, the Space Peachman, Kevin Lelujo Chapman, and Zealand, the Canon Shannon. Um, well, how are you, boys? We'll start, we'll go around the room. Jack, how are we? Feeling good about our chat today? Uh, I'm looking forward to the chat today. It's always good to chat with you, boys. Thank you. Kevin Chapman's with us. Hi, Ke hi Kevin. Is Zealand going by the Canon as his username now? Or, or we've got some very inconsistent naming conventions going on there. <laughs> I can't call him Zealand, Zealand Shannon. <laughs> Sorry. Why? Well, it doesn't work as well. So we go with the Canon. And it's a name I gave him and I'm, I'm forcing him to stick to. Uh, and of course, we're joined by um, Ted Lasso himself, Zealand, the Canon Shannon. How are you, Z? Right. Now, I, I, I get referred to as the Canon a lot. On, on Twitter and in various social media spaces, Good. specifically because of you. And I don't hate it. I don't no, hate I it. No, I like it. And I think you've, you've blasted your way into people's minds with graphics chat recently. And we'll talk about that later on. <laughs> um, what we're going to do then is talk about our Football Manager FM23 opinions. Uh, lots of talk this year. I don't know about you boys. I've never seen, like Jack's been around the longest, so we'll come to you, Jack. Like we've never seen a reaction quite like the reaction we've seen to this year's Football Manager. And if you're not aware of it, I think it's been more hostile than normal, Jack. Would you agree? Yeah, I feel like there's always that kind of undertone. You know, it's always felt like it's been a small minority of people who kind of sit in the corner and go, it's the same game again. And often it's easy to defend it as, no, there are changes. This year is harder than ever to defend that there's changes. Yeah. Kev, you've been around a, lo a long, a long, long time. Not just on Earth, but I mean in terms of the scene. Um, what have you made of it? Is it? How it's been different from like previous years to this year? Yeah, I think there's, uh, people are definitely less willing to have a wait for the game to come out and have a look to see what features might be hidden in it and i think almost from the initial announcement the attitude was very much yeah this is there's, there's nothing new here you've just moved a few things around and that's about it and people are not afraid to say it yeah that's definitely a theme see obviously you're still relatively new to the scene for a lot of people but even you have spoken out a little bit more this year than you may have done in a previous year so how have you felt about that not just what you've said but obviously the reaction is sort of a more general thing no, I think I felt what you're talking about right away. I made a video that was like you know, the, me reacting to the initial features announcement, which I know we're going to get to uh, at some point. I'm sure we will in this conversation. But I made that video and, you know, I had some positives and I had some negatives. And I had n a not small number of people accusing me of selling out and being paid by SI to promote the game and that the features were actually incredibly underwhelming and I, I was surprised right because i like to think of myself as a pessimist i famously took the stand that i think yearly sports games aren't that great and we'll just leave it at <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave it at that i've got, I've got a whole I don't section think they on subscriptions at some point so we'll get yeah yeah, yeah well i might have said some <laughs> other things that i shouldn't have said but the, the 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 point was i i generally don't like yearly sports games because i don't think they have the opportunity to update them enough to warrant a new game uh, and even I was being perceived as being way too cheery about this edition. So it was very early on before we'd even reviewed the alpha. It was the first feature announcement. I don't know necessarily what got people as riled up as, as they are, but it, it is different and it is it is angry. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it because I think there is, a, there is definitely a section of people. I don't think it's a particularly big section of people that think that creators generally, of which we would definitely categorize ourselves, as well as a few of the other guys that obviously made videos and talk about the game or like public faces of Football Manager, I think is probably the best way to put it, that we are afraid to say what we really think, either publicly or to Football Manager, at risk that we will lose Alpha Access or the relationships that we have ongoing with them. I personally don't feel like that's at risk ever. I feel like my dialogue with them is really open. Um, do you, do you, are you ever, Jack, we'll come back to you. Are you ever afraid to say what you actually think about a football manager? Not really. I mean, most of the time, I will say it kind of directly to the people who need to hear it. I think when you've got a voice like we do, where so many people listen in across the internet, often, you know, people will just bandwagon and jump on stuff you say and twist it in different ways. Uh, I thought it was interesting this year, like with the, it's probably the first features video I've ever watched where I felt underwhelmed. And in the video, I kind of said as much, you know, I sat down to do my reaction video and I sit there and go, it's 42 minutes long. What's <laughs> in this? This has got to be incredible. And halfway through, I was bored. And I kind of said as much in my video. And it's one of those things where it's not really beneficial to us or to anyone really to sit there and go and just kind of pretend everything's fine and that we're happy with what's shown. Like it was just an underwhelming first reveal and i think shine away from that just doesn't really benefit anyone yeah see so, see so back to you because of, of obviously your reaction to your tweet was was big and we'll talk about more of that specifically when we talk about graphics a little later on but 
are you in a position where your relationship with football manager feels at threat of things you've because you've had an incident like in the within the last 12 <laughs> months where you had some dialogue with football manager over something you made in a video whereas it was even, for those who didn't see it, it he made a video where his title was probably let's just say not that wise a football manager didn't take kindly to it and your dialogue with them was i would say awkward to some degree but do you ever feel yeah, like well, it, was, go on. it was clumsy yeah i think it, it was it was clumsy because obviously in the modern media world there's uh there is a relationship uh that is essentially i just got a fantasy football i'm so i can you believe that i do this as a job i didn't even <laughs> mute my phone the, uh, the the there's like a relationship that we have to have essentially right because i make my living talking about this game and they uh realize the value in that right because i am a, a, a different voice like right right like there's a there's an incentive for both of us to do something like say the alpha version of the game right where they make the game available early we get a really cool video out of it they get like added promotion for free essentially uh and that that sort of stuff is really is really cool but it also opens these channels for uh, of communication where when i make a video that i say uh the i i say that they lied about you know the dynamic youth rating uh, that they are able to, uh, they're they're able to come in pretty hot. I that that did change. I think my perception of what I wanted, or at least what I could expect, because I up until that point, when you start out making videos in a game, the first time the game actually recognized you, you was really cool. Like, I yeah. don't know if you remember the first time that you tweeted, and then all of a sudden, Football Manager replied to it. Right, and you just go, whoa, <laughs> yeah, like that is a, it's a really cool kind of amazing feeling. Um, but then you you start to realize it's like, well, you can't get too close because you have to be critical of the game sometimes. Yeah. And if you're if you're never critical of the game, then obviously people can't trust what you say because no game is ever perfect. And so um, it's it's a perilous balance. It's like a healthy distance that always has to be between the company and. Uh, the people that actually make videos about the game if you want the relationship to be healthy obviously sometimes that gets that gets messed yeah, up okay. that would that would that that experience definitely made me get really comfortable with the idea that there was always going to be a, a lot of distance yeah uh between myself and an si and football manager okay if you're someone that keeps yourself like quite middle to everything you're quite neutral in these conversations especially compared to the likes of me and z who are a bit more outspoken and jack does it in maybe slightly different ways coming from like a developer a developer perspective how do you see your relationship with a football manager? And does your relationship with a football manager affect what you say? Because I think there is an element, and maybe we'll come to this just, just afterwards, is that we know the guys that make it, right? The guys and girls that work on football manager, we're aware of them and we obviously care about... There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's like a due process. There's a, there's a point where we have to be fair with them, but also I don't want to make them cry. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like there has to be a process we go through where we, we approach it as adults basically which sounds a bit patronizing but we can't we, with the with the viewerships that we have we can't just say stuff flippantly and hope that 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 increases change like we have to do it in different ways but how is your relationship with them as someone who is a bit more neutral to them yeah i think the reason i probably appear a little bit more neutral is because i don't tend to do this kind of thing on twitter i think my view on it is if i'm directly asked i'll answer questions so it comes up a lot on stream people will ask me questions and i'll give my honest thoughts but i don't necessarily feel the need to volunteer them without being asked because i don't i don't know how constructive it is to do um not for fear of protecting the relationship that i've got with them because ultimately i think i'm at the point now where even if they never invited me down again never gave me early access to a game again i don't think it would massively impact my ability to do my job i think if I if the last couple of weeks where we've had the launch of the game, the one video missing had been my early access alpha video, I don't think it would have made any difference to the rest of the channel or the long term or anything like that. So it's not that I'm worried about um, losing the relationship that I've got with them. I think it's cool to have access to them and to be able to chat with the people behind the scenes. And I just, I don't know, I... I tend to just go for an easy life on Twitter. I'm too old for all that, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't need the notifications. Yeah, we're we're still surprised you can work it. To be honest, um, it's interesting though, isn't it? Because I think 
our relationship I, I view our relationship with them I mean it's different from the perception from the outside because a lot of the conversations are private is that it's healthy in the same way that a relationship with another person is healthy my relationship with football manager is healthy and that that breeds a degree of honesty and of course there are things we can't say from conversations we have either when we're in the like at the studio or privately or whatever like whatever it is but ultimately i think we do a really and it's really hard for people to understand this without seeing it i actually think we do a really good job of representing what the community feel when we're there and talking to them and in dialogue with them but and ultimately like privately there was no one more critical than me on their 42 minute feature video like to talk about that video i don't think from like a creative standpoint it was a particularly good video to, to watch i don't think it, i don't think it did yeah 42 minutes what yeah it like did, 42 minutes from a creative point of view it doesn't really serve a purpose if you're new to the game you're probably not going to watch a 42 minute video and if you've watched if you've watched football manager or played football manager for a long time you're probably going to watch that video anyway as like a supplementary video to a big hear all the new features videos so i think we would have agreed we'd have all done that video differently our reaction to it wasn't I think our first reaction for all of us was 42 minutes for that video. But let's talk about what was in the video and the the features they've talked about. Obviously, we covered a few in our alpha videos and our mindset going into those is we're trying to be like positive and showcase the game. So whether Jack's, uh, Jack's Jack sort of was positive. Uh, oh, were you overly positive in your video, Jack? Um, I, I think people took a video where I said five things I love as <laughs> Jack's doing a review and his bum licking sports interactive. Whereas I, I think for me, going into a new game, you always load up Football Manager and there's like these little things that you're maybe not that keen on or you think that's a bit rubbish and actually you get your hands on and go, oh, actually this makes sense. I kind of get it. And because that 42 minute video had done such an atrocious job of communicating some of the actual good changes because it just hadn't shown them, for my video, I wanted to show some of that stuff. Like you said about the stuff in that video, there was a lot of talk and not a lot of substance as to how it actually affected and impacted the game. And in some ways, when you watch a 42 minute video and only three or four minutes of it is actual gameplay, like you almost go in with this kind of cynicism towards it. It's like, well, what are they hiding then? Why aren't they showing us more? And I think for all of us with our alpha videos, correct me if i'm wrong you kind of want to show off what wasn't shown already because as a creator there are these gaps that you think oh people are going to want to see this i'll show that i yeah. mean creator or not i was excited going into the alpha video i've been playing football manager for over 25 years i've spent like 10 percent of my entire life playing football manager this was the new version i'm going to be excited and happy and positive when i get to play the the new one for the first time it doesn't mean i love everything about the game but i do love the franchise and was excited to play it so there was going to be positivity mm. in the video even if it's not the game that we were all asking for in the videos we were making in the run-up to it there's, there's, there's something to be said for this is we've never done this type of video before do you know what i mean like we've never done videos where we've been i think we're, we're trying to be constructively critical on what we've seen and what we feel about fn23 and because of the reaction this video felt like obvious to make this year it hasn't felt obvious to make in previous years there's been points where people have pushed back on us and we've gone yeah, but this is actually a really good change. And when you get to grips with it, you'll enjoy it. And this is something you should focus on. And this is something you should enjoy. And we're, and we're not really doing that other... Like, I'm, I do that as a consumer, not so much as a creator or because of my relationship with Football Manager. Like, that doesn't really come into it. It's just, I actually think the game isn't as bad as you're saying it is. Whereas this year, I think none of us would say the game hasn't improved, but it's about how much it's improved. And if people feel like they're being shortchanged a little bit, I think becomes the question. Um how do, you, how do you feel about this? When you, when, when you look at the features within the video, what was like your take? Obviously, there's a there's a there's a presenter take and there's a a consumer take, yeah, right? The, the, I think that they struggle sometimes to understand what the what people value and what people don't. Now, obviously, every everybody that plays Football Manager is going to value something slightly differently, but like they made a huge deal out of getting the licenses for this is just an example right they made a huge deal out of getting the licenses for european competitions now i i know that's the way they would word it and be like oh we got the licenses that's the big deal we got the licenses that's not actually what i care about what i don't think any of us care about what i, I don't think really anybody out there cares about what that does mean is that when you go into the match, there's this whole really cool Champions League presentation with this music and this and that, but that's not necessarily what they were talking about. Yeah. Right. They'll like offhand mention that the anthem plays, but if they'd put that in the video, that would have been cooler, right? Because I don't mm -hmm. think that that's a big important feature. It doesn't change the gameplay, but at the same time, the first time I went into a Champions League match, I was like, 
ooh. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, this is cool, right? You got these weird camera angles and all this stuff that is a very non-football manager e, to be honest. Yeah. And the song and, and everything. And th so that was a cool new feature, but that's not necessarily where they like pointed the light in, if the, in the feature video. If you'd have thought the video, imagine the video opens with the Champions League music. That's the first thing you don't even see Perfect. anything. Yeah. You open that. Like, I think the reaction to the video obviously changes then. Um, let, let's talk about the biggest feature change. In, in the, and we'll come back to you on this because you're someone that has done a lot of digging into this sort of thing and you've done a lot of videos based around it. It's the match engine. And I think we would all agree that the match engine is the biggest change this year, even though it might not have felt like it when it's not the first thing they mentioned in the video, but the match engine's had some serious changes. We got quite a few questions about that as well. Um, Buster Nets talked about it, saying it's the most tactically open match engine that we've had. And Jack Joyce, who works as part of the match team said, uh, we've made lots of improvements on mentalities, roles, AI, manager tactics, uh, trying to plug and play the same old tactic from FM22 might not play out in the same way. Mazala's inverted wing backs, wingers, advanced playmakers all behave more contextually now. Do you feel like that's changing enough for people? Because it is a big change and people look at it and say, oh, it's not changed, but then they play it and they maybe see something slightly different. No, it's changed. The match engine feels so different. I think the, what, for me, visually, really really impacts the match engine is the touches the first touch like there seems to be such a variety where bef there there never used to be a variety really in the in the passes or the touches at least not to this extent it feels like they've multiplied by magnitudes <laughs> now the touches are going all over the place there's more chaos because of it the passes are going all over the place there's more chaos because of it uh the the i call it the chaos modifier everything that's going on in the midfield now where the ball's just being turned over and it's it feels like a more realistic game uh and i think the the improvement of the match engine from 21 to 22 was not massive i think we have a bigger improvement from 22 to 23 in terms of the match engine itself i do think they should have led with it i, I think the match engine team in general at si has been killing it recently and uh even even though the graphics could be a little bit better the <laughs> the animations and the way that the match engine plays is great uh i i have not experimented with the tactics as much as somebody like bust the net would have at this point um but uh you know four three three feels normal i don't think inverted wingbacks are as broken as they used to be i don't think they're making deep penetrating runs past the striker anymore which is nice so it's little changes like that Sweep but keep players, they're, really, they're so. all over the place yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, no. Well, I think the goalkeepers are f like the, the, the variety of goals feels more realistic. Yeah. Right. Because not every goal is just right in the corner into the side netting. A lot of goals go through the keeper, or through the keeper. You know, you have the ball going through the keeper's legs now. Yeah. You have the ball, you know, hitting the keeper's fingers and then going in at a different angle. Right. And that could be frustrating because before goalkeepers either saved the ball or didn't touch it <laughs> at all. So now you yeah. get to watch your goalkeeper touch it and let it in, anyways. But I think that's better for the match engine. I really actually, I got to play a ton of matches like the other day for the first time. Played probably like eight, nine matches on the stream. Wow. Which, for as you, you guys for know you, for me, is just incredibly. You streaming for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> An incredibly fast pace. And I, I really do enjoy the match engine. They, they haven't added dribble moves yet, but it feels more like an authentic yeah dribbling experience when they're kind of the you know the ball isn't on the ground all the time i i, the, I think the match engine is absolutely the biggest change yeah. I, was, I was split between that and scouting but i've been underwhelmed by scouting playing the game so far and overwhelmed by the match engine. kev is a seven time showdown winner and i will not be saying that again so enjoy it uh how do you think it's going to play differently one-on-one -on -one, and how have you found it just for your own solo play i mean as much uh, it, it looks and feels very different when we're playing it but the same old tactics still work. That's not... You know. that, uh, I'll read it again, Kev. Jack Joy says, you can't just plug and play the same old tactic for FM22. Are you saying you can? Well, I've just finished my first season on stream with Peterborough playing uh, uh, Gagan Press Diamond and finished on 125 points. Yeah, but you're an expert. You're a professional, so maybe it doesn't count for you. We lost two games all season. And that was See, just Gagan this... Pressing all season long. My, my size transfers. is an unfair criticism, though. This, because, like... Four two three one works. You know, four three three works. That's why everybody uses it in real life, right? But this wasn't either of them. This was the diamond, which was the big tactic from last year, the narrow stuff. Oh, oh, people, it's, oh. You, you, I should. I guess I should try my tactic from last year. I'll let you know. How it goes. <laughs> and I think near that, post corners still very yeah, effective. I've, I think Go the on, weird oh, thing. Oh yeah. 
just every year we hear, and I mean this in the most loving way, we hear the same stuff. You know, managers are going to be more intelligent with their AI. Your formations that worked last year aren't going to work. Like last year, it was all about that. Oh, you're not going to be able to press to death anymore. You know, your players are going to get tired. And it's weird, right? Because with a match engine, I feel like there's always this honeymoon phase. But the reality is it's not until it's been settled for two or three months that actually you do start to see the patterns and you do start to see that stuff. And maybe this year will be a year where those patterns don't exist, you know, where we don't just see a replay start with a throw in and you go, well, this is a cross to the back post for the guy who's unmarked all the time, like <laughs> it was last year. But like we know, we play the game more than the average person, right? We know that gets to a point when you're recording videos or doing a stream where you're like, I've seen this highlight before. And I, it's different, this match engine. I'm hesitant to say it's better because I genuinely think you need to play Super hundreds early, of games right? to early. really form an opinion on it. And also, it can change with a patch at the end of the beta. If they patch it in January, there was one year where, I don't know if you can remember, they did a patch in January and suddenly one-on-ones were no longer scored. Like for the rest of the year, the one-on-ones were just terrible. If your striker was one-on-one, they just missed. And I feel like the match engine is this ever-evolving thing. At the moment, it is great. It is this nice honeymoon period. There's kind of part of me that wishes they'd patch it more often during the year, so we just got a few more procedural changes. Um, so it never really settled, and you stop seeing those patterns. But it's one of those things where I feel like we hear the same talk from SI and we have the same conversation most years where you go, oh, it feels different. It feels better because you get so used to what you had before. And the reality is it's hard to quantify just how much better it is until you've had lots of time with it. I just want to pick up on something Jack said there about the pressing thing and how they've talked about how pressing has been nerfed and you can't press all game. If anything, I think that's been made easier to exploit because the AI can't press all the time because the players will get tired but as the pl as the player controlled manager as long as you're resting them from training between matches your players yeah. aren't getting tired so your opposition are getting tired and you're not so it's kind of been tweaked to make it so that as the player you can press all day long but nobody else can and it's but made it more extreme that's interesting that, yeah. that's the that's the biggest point on football manager that's that is the conversation of is football manager too easy if you tinker and touch everything and you, and you make everything man managed basically that's the inherent advantage you have over the ai and when we do things like the showdown we play each other that advantage is kind of taken away a little bit and it's about who can do more who can take longer maybe who can make changes who can who can adapt to situations more so we always have that advantage over the ai and until they make the ai like super responsive so they react to every little thing you do it's, it's always going to be like this though isn't it like we're, we're always going to have that advantage over the computer and football manager is that fair to say but there I was lots like of talk this year that the AI was going to be better. <laughs> Three of you. And at the moment, what it's I'm an alpha, seeing... Kev. We're still in alpha, man. I know, but what I'm seeing from the AI out. is every AI manager is playing at least one, if not two, defensive midfielders. The, the A back three, they're just sitting behind the ball and they're not changing dependent, regardless of what's going on in the match. You could be yeah. three or four nil up against them and they're still just going to sit there with a back seven and not come at you. And it's... It, it's just weird little things around the AI at the moment that, like you say, it's in the beta. Hopefully that's something that's going to be addressed. But when that was something that was in that 42 minute yeah, video, they yeah. talked specifically about the manager AI. Yeah. And if anything, it seems like it's doing less. Yeah, I should say I've said it's an alpha there. I promise we're recording this during the beta, Sports Interactive, for anyone that's curious. Um, and obviously it could, it could change up until this point. We should say like it's, we, we never truly know what it's going to be like at the point of release. We're very much talking about this midway through. Um, see, so yeah, I felt like you wanted to say something, so I wanted to come to you. No, I, I think that, well, it was just something I wanted to bring up that points out that the AI managers are just not uh, uh, super on it and have struggled with fitness in particular for a long time as international tournaments. So I have particular experience with this because I do those simulations where we're like on stream, we'll sit down for a few days and just watch an international tournament. And we had an AFCON final between Senegal and Egypt that was like two FMs ago where Sadio Mane and Mo Salah both didn't start and you're just because they were too tired and it's like well like there just is there isn't like a logic modifier almost where you you rest or players and, and kind of progress and since we're just talking about what was in the features I would like to bring up what wasn't because international management is never going to change in FM if it didn't change for this one that's coming out two weeks before the World Cup starts uh and so I think that's that that makes me sad yeah. that they didn't kind of seize that opportunity i guess is that, is that your 
Like it's a weird way of putting it. Is that your least favorite thing about FM23 that they didn't add that? Or are you more, if you have to choose one out of that and set pieces, because I know you and Kev, you're big no, on I, these two. Yeah, it's, which one would, it's set pieces. You'd rather, you'd rather have set, set. pieces. Is, is, that, is that the biggest yeah. disappointment about 23 that we didn't see a big change to that? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, okay, so here's my thing, right? I understand why a lot of things aren't in Football Manager because I would love to be able to design a stadium or something, all this stuff that people <laughs> talk about, but that's not... You managers don't do that, right? Like that. You as far are, as we know, you are managing as, far, as far as we know, team. Okay. as far as we yeah. know, maybe they, yeah, <laughs> Pep probably. <laughs> yeah, but as far as we know, managers don't do that. And what managers do is set pieces. Like the number one way, in my opinion, that managers are able to impact the small parts of the game, like the ultimate "yes, I outsmarted you" sort of moment in real life, is this brilliant little set piece routine that you've cooked up. And I think football manager has defeated, we, we just kind of have to call it what it is, right? They've defeated themselves because them not changing the set piece maker to be more intuitive, more reactive so that you don't have to like set it up before every game because I'm a tinkerer and it bothers me. And I'm like a little OCD about it, it. You. before every game. I cool. go make sure that I, yeah. play no, you. Uh, before every, <laughs> if you didn't know uh, before every game, I go in and make sure that like you know, the shortest people are here. The tallest people are here because your lineup's always changing. And I've already pitched ways for that to yeah. be changed. Like my animation team has created the UI that would work. Uh, but I, I don't think that they expand that. And I don't think that they add more possibilities in terms of free kick offense and free kick defense and those sorts of things, because they know it'll break the match engine because they know uh, that's my only explanation at this point is, and I obviously don't know freaking know this for sure. Uh, but it, that that that's the only thing that makes sense to me is that if they add the ability to set up more intricate plays or more intricate defense or more intricate offense that there would be something that you could do that people like us would discover and make a video about that is entirely unstoppable takes, takes one and person right it takes one person to call yeah. something that works and then everyone's sitting at the front post and oh wait we have that uh if, if, <laughs> if the ai can't work out to go attacking when you're three nil down it's not going to be able to counter a complex set piece that you've created in a fantasy creator so yeah, it's, it, it exactly. all comes back to the AI every time. So I just think on that as well, there's like a halfway house to be had here. Like I accept that to revamp the entire set pieces is probably a lot of work and it's not a simple process. But the fact that we don't have set piece coaches in game, that is a thing. You have teams that now have coaches specifically for throw-ins. The fact that we don't just have like a coach that you dedicate to set pieces, someone who essentially like how you ask the assistant to pick a start at 11, just assigns everyone their roles on your corner routines for you. Because like you said, Z, it's like every game you go in, it's like, well, right, I've swapped out one of my centre-backs and now the other centre-back on the other side is taller. I want him on the near post. The fact that you can't have a coach or someone within the confines of what we already have who just basically intelligently picks players based on a hierarchy priority system for like what you select, like, that feels like such a small kind of win. And maybe there is this reason why that can't exist or maybe it's a case of it's in the pipeline and it will come in the years to come. But I just feel like this is a conversation and a feature that people have wanted for so long. It's not like yeah, it's funny. something that people haven't been asking for, but the difference is this year, much like with the international football stuff, is the features that have come out, people go, oh, it's not really stuff that I necessarily wanted. And then you look around and I think for a few years, there's been this overwhelming consensus, set pieces, international management are two things that universally I think people want to see better. And I guess the argument is international football people don't use it as much therefore there's not as much resources to put into it but just having little things like the ability to train your players maybe the ability to plan out a training camp ahead of a tournament where you want to go maybe where you want to base your team for an international tournament based on where the matches are going to be played like little things like that would be so good and i kind of agree with z to the extent that this was a year to do that i do think with women's football coming to the game and obviously this is something that we know is coming soon whether it's next year whether it's a little bit beyond that we don't know but with women's football international football is almost bigger than club football it's almost the reverse of men's football so if this wasn't the year to do it if international football doesn't get improved with women's football i'm gonna sit there so confused as to what they've been doing what would that look like your confusion what, I think we got it before that, actually. We'll actually, yeah, what would it I, look I, like? We, we got a bit of it. <laughs> but um, no, I, I, ju I just feel like, like I think we, we're a bit frustrated, right, over these things. Because I think in the last few years, we've seen stuff get added and changed to football manager. And it's not necessarily been things that we feel like we want. And certainly I feel yeah. like we have audiences who are very vocal about what they want. We probably have our ears to the ground more than a lot of people at SI do 
with regards to what the mainstream audience of Football Manager want. Yeah, there's a lot of people watching these days. Not necessarily me, but there's a lot of people watching these days, which is which is big. Don't laugh, see. That was very that, that felt very targeted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they watch you. Okay, we get it. It was funny, dude. You you you're pumping numbers on Twitch, but thanks, man. Uh, do you want to leave a link? Or, no, we'll leave that for, in the description. Uh, links to everyone in the description. It's worth saying, right, we know that when we make these videos three weeks before a game launch, we know the features that we're saying there are hopes for the game with no prior knowledge, by the way. Like, we know very little about what goes in before it's announced. We, like, we're very much on, on board with everyone else to that. We know in that three-week period, they're not going to put everything we want in. Hmm. There are some people being like, well, they're obviously not going to add this. It's like... Well, obviously we know like that's not how it works um i just want to make that clear that we are, we are we're all aware of that we kev even even kev's aware kev's aware some of this stuff is easy fix though like oh, the blimey. international oh. management just let you rest players don't you don't even need to no, rebuild why, it why? just let me rest players yeah uh, basically why there's no morale and no <laughs> training when you manage yeah, like, just add them in they're already in the game team. just add them just in you can fix <laughs> it properly in five years but just add them in for this year so at Here's least that. it's playable is that a big? Is that uh, a big part of the conversation uh, then? Is that so with with corners? If you could just have a hierarchy in the same way that you do the takers, but for positional areas, so you just basically put one, two, three, four, five, six. You add that. That solves that problem. Allow us to rest players in international football. Add yeah. the training that you have for club football. Just put that in international football yeah. for that three week period. And I think a yes. lot of people would have gone, yeah, fair enough. Now look, there might be loads of complicated reasons why they can't do that. But for our tiny little minds, we can't fathom as to why. Uh, let's let's move on a little bit because the, let's talk about the reaction a little bit more to the game this year. And of course, we've discussed why we think it's happened. But the, one of the catalysts for this was there's a YouTuber, Jack and Kev, I don't know if you're aware of him, called Zealand the Cannon Shannon, and he likes the cannon <laughs> bit in the middle, who did a tweet that read, football managers' graphics are terrible, and I'm tired of pretending they're not. And then I think, I can only imagine he scoffed as he did that, right? He was furious. Now, this is a conversation that's worth saying that we've been having for quite a few years. Like I've, I've talked about it on stream almost every day and have done. But when a powerhouse like Zealand the Cannon Shannon speaks up on it, everyone that now these days, Zealand takes notice. I want to know, because I've not spoke to you about this. Why did you tweet it? It was a network game tweet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I can now take If this if this was the reveal, this, this would the be the best video. Yeah. It was yeah, was no. Lelouja's tweet. He does and, hate Eminem uh, though. He tweets that once as well. He hates Eminem, right? Too. Yeah, no, that was I, I I I don't know if you ever heard this story. I so I promise I'll answer that question in a second. But I was I'd gone on a few dates with a girl at a time. I know this is amazing. And mere absolute miracle. And we're hanging out. We're like walking through Central Park or something. And she goes, so why don't you like Eminem? <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I forgot about the tweet. I was like, what? And apparently the tweet came up as a wreck. She didn't even have Twitter. Amazing. It came up as a recommended tweet to her friend. And she's like, wait, isn't this the guy you're like hanging out with? And like sent her a screenshot of it, of me saying that I, I, I hated Eminem. So I had to explain the network game <laughs> and the concept of a network game tweet. I'll take, I'll take the credit. To her for those, for those that it. Because she thought, she thought I had this deep, seated hatred I should, I should give people Eminem. i should give people a bit of context if we lost a game to one another in the network game last year we got to tweet something and during the super bowl i made z tweet that eminem ruined the super bowl halftime show <laughs> to which uh yeah it was great to which, yeah i, I mean I, you've got to pick you've got to pick your moments haven't you you've got to pick your moments yeah you do there were some great there were some great tweets i i triggered the ire of all scotland and other things but again, for, again, for the, the sorry, graphics sorry. tweet yeah that yeah. Was, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was that, that was the worst my inbox has ever been. The the t the, the, the tweet, the graphics came. I I just gotten back from TwitchCon in San Diego, and Central Park, every time I'm San involved, Diego, where is he not, viewers? Where is he not? Sorry, Z, go on. It's in Wales at the moment. <laughs> yeah, apparently, uh, that's what the mustache for. I'm trying to blend in, but the um. The, oh, I'm in TwitchCon, and anytime I'm in these like creator circles, right? You're at like the hundred thieves party or something, and everybody's like, "Well, what do you play?" And it's like Fortnite. What do you play? And it's like Apex. What do you, you know? And, and then it gets to me, and I'm always like, <clears throat> "Football Manager," right? And I'm I'm cool with that. It's usually funny, and people just go, "What?" And I'm like, "It's just kind of FIFA for nerds, basically." And wow, uh, and, <laughs> wow. Do we look like know, nerds it, to you? More than I mean, well, do we? What? Do we look like nerds to you? Don't answer that. Carry on. Keep going with the story. <laughs> 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 uh, 
uh, I, I I look in the mirror and I'm like, you belong in football manager. That's <laughs> We've thought that for a while, to be fair. Well, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, but the point is, certain people, like maybe you're in a longer conversation and they're genuinely interested. They'll be like, well, what is the game, right? Like we there was this Twitch Classic golf tournament, basically. And, I'm, and it, we're, I'm just hanging out with these three other people for 18 holes. So, of course, we get to like, you know, looking at videos and streams and stuff. And they're looking at the game and they're like, you know, one person's like, oh, is this a mobile game? One, but like, it doesn't look good, right? Like, it just, it doesn't look modern. It doesn't look like a game that it, in that experience, right? This was my first, like, I'd been to the TwitchCon in Amsterdam and had similar experiences. So it wasn't like the San Diego TwitchCon was what set it off. On, like, honest to goodness, it was TwitchCon San Diego combined with a very poorly timed tweet from Miles. <laughs> It was like celebrating, right? The graphical improvements. I look improvements forward to, to Mars's tweet scanning. every year of his right. face for the yeah. year. Like, which we should put, we'll put it on. We'll get Chris put it on yeah. screen. So this is the this is the tweet Miles does where he says about the right. face scan. And I thought the silence from the community with that tweet sort of told its own story. You didn't see a lot of community members or content creators <laughs> reply to that because it's not. Yeah. It's not exactly showcasing the game in the absolute best light. And I'm not. I'm not so sure. So it was that. It was three things. It was that combined with me just being at a TwitchCon, having to basically explain the game that I played. Uh, and yeah. and, 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 not, yeah, and, and, and receiving <laughs> feedback that was like, you know, this, like, I'm sure the game is fun, but it, it looks bad. Uh, and the third thing was I was playing Rome Total War on the flight back home, right? Original remastered Rome Total War, right? Like, not good. Uh, game was made in 2004. And I'm scrolling in on the people that are like running across the field, right, to to die at my behest. And they, I mean, they like, it looks really similar to like football manager graphics in general. And at that point, I, I knew that I was maybe going to make a video or something. And then for, I just woke up one morning and I was like, you know what? I've, I've never seen anybody actually just say out loud and I'm sure you guys have, but I, I, like you've mentioned, I haven't been around as long. And so I was like, I'm literally just going to sit here and call it what it is. And like, I don't know why we put up with this, but the graphics are just obviously bad. And Football Manager, they just are. They're way behind what other games. I mean, like Top 11, which is a mobile game, yeah, looks better. Not necessarily the animations or the way the match engine works, but just the graphics. Yeah. Graphically, it looks better so, than, than Football Manager, which shouldn't happen. So let's play Devil's Advocate a little bit. We okay. There's obviously reason as to why it looks the way it looks, and we can speculate on that, and it can be because they want to service the computers of people that are playing on games years gone by, right? And their minimum specs are hardware that came out in 2008, and they're obviously still working to that hardware to some degree. If you're going to put it as your minimum spec, I guess you're still making it viable on those computers. Whether those computers can open Chrome or not, I'd be quite interested to know. <laughs> but if they can play FM, then fair enough. Um, and then obviously there's a massive cost involved in updating the graphics and i think the conversation has become completely blurred and i'm trying to find nuance and debate with people within this and i've got two schools of thought it has to look like fifa or i do not care about this i do not play football manager for this i use 2d and i am in the middle of that conversation saying i don't want it to look like fifa i don't care if you don't care like there's loads of features that are put into the game mm. that i don't care about there are loads of things that go into football manager that i think like for example under 21 management has been talked about for as long as i've been playing the game when can we when can we manage those teams i think that is one of the most pointless ideas but i understand that putting it into the game creates a better depth of the game that people want to play and you could apply that to set pieces and international management and any feature you could think of i see graphics is the same so if say it's at a two out of ten right now and fifa let's use fifa as the example is a 10 out of 10 because there aren't many better football games in terms of looks on the market you maybe struggle to find one so i'd like fm to sit around a five or a six or a seven like i don't need it to be the best looking game on the marketplace. I don't want it to destroy everyone's laptops year in, year out. But I do think it's an area of the game that hasn't improved enough. And I'm going to come to Kevin Chapman and ask the question, does it matter? To me personally, no. Genuinely not bothered. But then adding the context to that, that before I was creating content, I didn't even bother using logo packs, face packs. I started playing the game when it was text only. I genuinely don't really care i wouldn't even be putting face packs or kits in the game if my viewers didn't insist that i did so <laughs> for me i'm just playing it i'm not even paying very much attention while the matches are happening 
they're just a means to an end to get the overall story that's going on in my head as i live in my little fantasy football manager world so for me personally i'm not that bothered but for me as a content creator who would like to see the game grow and my business grow off the back of it then i completely recognize that it would bring new people in especially in a year like this when they're launching on the playstation 5 i cannot imagine what the reaction from someone on ps5 who just decides to give it a try because they like football i like fifa let's try this new football game i cannot imagine what their reaction is going to be when they see this game on their playstation 5 so i see that for like the wider audience and the long-term growth of the game it needs to happen but i don't think it will add to my enjoyment at all when it does yeah i think it's worth saying we are very aware that we are people that as because of the job that we do the systems that we have are probably a much higher standard than the, the average person who's using a laptop from x year 2017 or whatever like we get that but i don't think again i don't think that's the angle any of us are coming at that from like kev, kev cares more from a creative point of view but for me it's it's not about like ruling people out of the game and only making it viable for people that can play it or run it like it's, it's just not about that it's just about they've still got 2d frequent... classic in the game as an option you yeah, could leave and... the current match engine in there if you had to that's, that's it G graphic options are an option jack you you replied to z's tweet with like a graphical thing obviously you've worked as what was your what was your former job title for everyone uh, I worked as a cinematic artist. So graphics and game design and looking. Making, making what stuff look nice like. in video game engines. I, sus I suspect before we come back to Z, you've got quite strong opinions on this. So Jack, give us give us your thoughts on the um, graphics conversation. I think the first thing to just distinguish is match engine, graphics engine. So the match yeah. engine is the ball moving around the pitch, the way the players move in terms of their AI, the graphics engine is how that is visually represented. They are two separate things. So when we're talking about the match engine, I think in this sense, we're talking about the graphics engine and how it looks. My biggest concern is I, I'm someone who came to the Championship Manager series when 2D was added. My older brother used to play the other versions. I'd watch him on text only, but as kind of a 10-year-old, it didn't really grip me reading lots of... It reminded me of teletext on my TV growing up. But suddenly there was these dots moving around and kind of this... I had this light, you know, this light bulb moment. I was like, I want to play this now. Like, there's a, it's pretty. And I think the way in which video games have changed, especially in the last five to ten years, like the standard of mobile games just as in isolation that visually is so high now to the point where you look at the current Football Manager match engine, it is worse than mobile games in 2022. And whilst we talk about supporting laptops made in 2008 or whatever year it is, you know, over a decade ago, the reality is those machines are weaker than phones that we have now. Technology on the whole has just developed at such a rapid rate. In the last 10 years, computing power, I mean, it's mind-blowing. When we talk about the graphics engine, I don't think anyone wants it to look like FIFA. I don't think we're expecting it to look like FIFA. FIFA has had 20 years of continual development. The reality is... The match engine that we have right now is probably comparable to PlayStation 2 era FIFA, just there or thereabouts. I think the lighting's probably, the animations are definitely better. The lighting's probably comparable, but the actual fidelity just isn't there. When you look at the new Champions League cutscenes and it goes in close, you think this looks okay, but it just, it doesn't have that same detail, right? It just feels a bit bland. And I think my biggest issue with the match engine over the last few years is, while some areas have got better, other areas have got worse, people kind of fixate on regen faces as a good example of something that artistically in Football Manager kind of hit a certain standard and then they redid a load of it and it probably isn't at the level it was before, you know, in terms of the, you used to be able to have like custom hair packs on 2D regens or was add-ons you could get to enhance it. And we lost a lot of that. And I think the match engine has, for a while, escaped a lot of criticism. But the reality is that ever since new stadiums were put in kind of five or six years ago, we've been looking at the same gazebos and same burger vans and same brick walls in the corner of football stadiums, like at Premier League level for the last five or six years. That stuff just hasn't changed. And ultimately, I think it's impossible to not look around and think, man, you know, what could this game look like if there was just a bit more investment there? Because the reality is, is it hasn't changed that much. Like visually, the new animations, they are great, but that's kind of a bare minimum, I feel like you look at. just the, You can sing yeah. and dance about new animations and about the new match engine, but the way it's all packaged and displayed, ultimately, it just makes me feel a little bit sad when I look at it because I feel like there's all this missed potential. And like Kev said, you know, people are you know, going to load up the game for the first time. People hear about Football Manager and they go, so it's like FIFA, but bigger. <laughs> then they sit and go, oh... And it's one of those things where it's unavoidable. I want to say people judge a book by a cover, but people don't read anymore. You know, they have a Kindle, so there's no book cover anymore. But like people are going to look at it and their first impression is made up. 
And there is part of me that wonders, especially with it going on to console, where, I mean, the game presumably is a success on console because it's releasing again on console. It's not something that we saw with Stadia when they had the one year on Stadia. It came out once, then just stopped, obviously. Second year of an Xbox version, first year of a PlayStation version. Assuming those copies are selling well, that is suddenly the average kind of, you know, benchmarking of the machines running Football Manager taking a step up. And like you said, Ben, it's not about nuking the experience for people who are playing on integrated graphics on a laptop in their lunch break. That stuff can still exist. But ultimately, games have moved on in the last 10 years and Football Manager hasn't. So, so coming back to Z, and I don't think any of us would really disagree with anything you just said there. Coming <laughs> back to Z, I saw the argument made on your tweet. Like it was, a, it was a tweet that went around. It's an argument that's been made to me quite a few times as well. Of, But no one plays Football Manager for the graphics, Z. And I saw your response and I want you to say it because it's good. No one plays Football Manager <laughs> my for response, the graphics. My, my response consistently was, nobody plays Football Manager for the graphics because you can't. <laughs> like, like, you, you cannot play Football Manager for the graphics. Uh, there's You have to play Football Manager because you're just a sick person that needs to you know micromanage a, a team in the Latvian second division was, because that's, that's just what that, you want to do. That's really funny, yeah. by the way. So I was, I was listening to the Five Star Potential podcast and Joe said, Joe said something on there. And I had, a, I had about a two hour breakdown. He just went, you realize like people that play Football Manager, they're playing a job. And I was thinking, my job's playing a job. Like, <laughs> what, what, what am I doing? <laughs> what, what have I spent the last six years doing? I thought, oh yeah, he's made a really good point there. I'm playing a job for my job. This is, I really, yeah, I really am a child. Um, so, but, so graphically then, what, where do they need to get, for you Z personally, right? As the, as the guy that started yeah. the debate as it goes on at the moment, there's expectation versus reality. And where do you fit in that? Like what they're capable of doing and achieving compared to what like the expectation levels people have. Because we're not trying to make the game worse with this conversation. I think people need to remember that. No, there were, there were a lot of various takes from like, well, you sitting on your mountaintop with your, you know, supercomputer, like trying to tell us people with 2008 laptops, like how to live. And it, like, like I'm suggesting all of a sudden anybody that doesn't have like at least a 3090 in their computer should just not be able to play <laughs> football manager or something. I've got a 3070. Uh, Can we not do that? Yeah. <laughs> I might win a showdown <laughs> if we start capping it at a graphic card capability. <laughs> That'd be good. Yeah, who, who, who's the first to get their hands on the 4,000? <laughs> but it's like, you know, it, like it was some sort of eat the rich response to it where it's like, you don't know how lucky you, you've you got it. And I'm like, look, I mean, if, if uh, what other video game do you know caters to, you know, smart toasters and laptops that were made 15 years ago? Like it, it's the only game that I know that I'm aware of. Not that I have a super broad gaming sphere, but every other game or game series that I play is trying to make the best game possible. And Football Manager does feel like it has this built-in excuse for the fact the graphics look largely the same over the last 10 years, uh, that they are trying to cater to their player base. So, so like, the reason that's your, the, like the reason that your player base is because like... Are they scared? Yes, people are, are, we, are we essentially saying that they're scared? The Football Manager are scared to cut uh, off a percentage of their audience in an attempt to revolutionize the game. Because we think the graphics change would be revolutionary, I, 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 would, I would argue. I do. From where, from where it is to where we would like it to be. Is, that, is, is it a fear? Is it a cost? Is it like there must be a reason for it? And we can only really speculate on what that is. So it, I was disheartened when I saw the reaction to the tweet. Because I know that what I just accidentally did for them was field tested the idea of a graphics update yeah there's this weird and based off sorry there's on, this weird gatekeeping to yeah. football manager isn't there like there's people yeah. who look down on people who yes. play fifa and football manager if i tweet out i'm playing fifa in an evening people go why would you play the child's football manager kind of thing <laughs> and like i feel like you really stirred that part of people who oh, kind of man. are this hardcore yeah. people who sit there go i've played this game for 20 years my my children watch me play it i watch my children play it i want to play <laughs> I'm, I'm a, that's how i imagine they are they're typing with their fist as they reply to you i don't follow kev so I don't know what Kev said. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> uh, there, there, there is that element of uh, it, it's inertia. It's like social inertia. It's this refuse, like they're afraid of the game changing, and they were perfectly willing so to just spend. It's because the money they've lived through the change in. from two D to three D and three D not working. We all lived through that change. They've experienced it before. People had to go out and buy new laptops, and there's a huge section of the football manager 
player base that they're not gamers they don't have any other games they had to i remember how difficult it was to explain to them what steam was the year you had to use steam for the first time yeah so there's a lot of people who literally just use their laptop to play football manager every year and aren't in it have no interest in going out and spending 500 pounds on one that's any good that could run a better version of the game so that's that's what they're worried about they're going to get cut out of it and brought into this larger thing that's gaming that's full of nerds that they don't like because they're cool football people yeah we we could go into detail about like how big the game would have to be right i think fifa is like beyond 50 gigabytes that's a massive game football manager is still below five so like again there's probably a middle ground to be found storage is increasing on every device but again that that means you are affecting those those lesser devices there's not really another way of putting it i'll just say on that like video games have 4k texture packs you download as optional extras i don't even feel like that's an excuse for it like you could have it be an optional thing people opt into yeah so it's it's, it's about it's so it's about enabling not enabling people to have a better experience to to bounce off what kev said if 3d wasn't in the game it's hard i don't obviously i wasn't around when that was implemented i wouldn't be playing the game I know that for a well, fact. Why I started did playing they bring it in, for goodness existed. sake? <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, but it's interesting. No, I mean, the first time I ever saw the game, it was in 3D. I didn't know 2D existed until after I was creating content and people started to mention 2D to me. And I'm like, what are they talking about? And then I realized it was some setting in the top. Yeah. I, I, I Like, 3D is something that brought me in. And now, of course, I'm a lifer that will play it regardless. But... Uh, I think that there is a large number of people that are probably like me, whether people would like to admit it or not, where if the game looks better, then they're willing, to, they, they would actually love the game, but they don't know that it's worth it because they take one look at the game and then they... And this is where you know. the gamble is from Sports Interactive's point of view, because they've got their existing player base and to go and get this new player base that, that might be bigger, but might be smaller, there's a part of the existing one I that think, you potentially uh, have to sacrifice. We, we, we just, just quickly say, right, we know that Football Manager know the data. We're not naive to that. We know that Football Manager will know exactly what machines people are playing Football Manager on. And we talk, we, we spoke some, about something earlier on, Jack, and I think we should bring it up, is that, that F- FM made a play a few years ago to make Football Manager more accessible to lots of people, and it didn't work. And people, people, a lot of people listening to this now are probably going, what, what, what do they do? And I'm gonna let Jack work the space peachman <laughs> tell you what they tried to do, and it, and it, ha- and it evidently hasn't worked. Are we talking about the Stadia stuff here? We are Just, talking I, about the Stadia okay. stuff. Yeah, so obviously, I mentioned earlier, Football Manager came out on Stadia for one year, and Stadia, in cloud gaming as a whole, for people who don't know, it's essentially the idea that out in the cloud, up in the sky, there's a PC somewhere that is running the game that you want to play, and in the same way you stream a video from YouTube, you stream the video game to your PC. So irrespective of how your PC is, technically, all the processing, everything is being done elsewhere. And Football Manager came out for a year on Stadia. And part of me wonders if they looked at that Stadia kind of solution of thought, this could be the future. And so they kind of went all on on that. They were one of the first adopters of Stadia. And I'm sure... Well, not only that, they this. delayed the launch of that year's game. So it came out the day for Stadia, Stadia yeah. launched. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I imagine Google paid a pretty penny for it. But obviously it only happened for a one-year thing. And part of me wonders, was that them thinking, well, if the game does well on Stadia and 30% of our player base are now all playing on the exact same machine, streaming it onto their old laptop, that is the, the go sign to, you know, jump on board and do something new. And obviously yeah. Stadia is no longer a thing. And now I wonder if we're in a second wave of that with console gaming. You know, the Xbox edition came out last year. It was the first return to console, I think, since 2008. And our PlayStation is joining the fray. And mm. is it going to take 40% of the people who play Football Manager playing on one of those two consoles to be the thing that says, right, now is the time to do something with the visuals? I, I Deep down, I want to hope, and I'm just coming from a game dev perspective here, graphics engines are really difficult. Football Manager, as far as I'm aware, has been in the same graphics engine that has been procedurally updated for the last 10 years. Was it FM11 where 3D came in? I can't remember the exact year. Or was it 09? Yeah, maybe slightly before that, but yeah. Either, either that, way, a long, long time ago. And it becomes, from a game dev perspective, people work in Unreal or work in Unity now. And if you're trying to recruit people and say, hey, join our art team, welcome. We're using this engine that we made in 2009. It, like, it's really difficult to onboard people and actually progress it. And so I want to believe there is kind of something going on behind the scenes where they are building an art team or working on this stuff because it takes years to do this like we're having this discussion now 
The reality is the graphics of Football Manager, unless they started it five years ago when Burger Vans and stuff first entered the game and nothing's changed since, we're going to be waiting a long time to see radical graphical changes. But forgive me if I'm wrong, Z, with your tweet, you, you just want to see some iteration. You just want to make it feel like it's progressing rather than you look at something for the first time, like a screenshot of this year's Football Manager and go, I don't know if I'm looking at FM21, FM22. Like It, it could be a five-year-old game for all you know. Yeah, you, you, every other game that's ever existed. No, nah, it's not true. There's plenty of text-based text -based games and stuff. Mine, mine's people's looking every, at you going, every, come on, mate. Every other <laughs> game that is in the same echelon in terms of sales as Football Manager and concurrent players where Football Manager gets in the top 10 on Steam all the time for concurrent players. Those other games that are around Football Manager, when they're announcing features, graphics are a part of that announcement. Right? It's not the whole thing, right? It, but, but you know, when those games come out, it is, oh, and we also did this to improve graphics, right? Every other sports game you've ever played. Now, I know Football Manager is is the the highbrow sports game, right? Every, every other sports game, especially in the US, all of them every year, it's like, well, we added this thing for graphics, right? You can now do these things. Football Manager just doesn't go at it that way. But my most important point on this is that it doesn't matter what you do on all of your spreadsheets the things that you remember in football manager over anything else happen in that match engine right when you win the champions league it happens in the match engine when your wonder kid becomes a legend it happens in the match engine yeah. right outside of finding a wonder kid or signing somebody what actually happens in the match engine is the pinnacle of the game it's the most important part of the game whether it's dots low graphics high graphics that's the magic moment that's the moment that hooks you the moment you're running around your apartment and you're like oh, i'm gonna be playing this game for the rest of my life yeah right and we i'm sure we all had that moment at one point i, I think um, i think i think it's obvious this is something we care about like we could do a whole video just on this yeah, if you wanted to definitely and i understand there's there's a lot of skepticism from other people and the big fear i see is but if they do that they won't care about this and i want them to care about this and it's like but then you show them this year's feature and you go like if this is this the set they were working on like this is the feature set you would you would want rather they worked on than do the graphics this year like for me i'd, I'd much rather have seen like i don't know a 15 percent graphical improvement than some of the features that we've got this year um well i think it's important to say I, I ran this by si i was i was allowed to sit in my alpha video and i'm going to say it here because it's a forum to say it in is i said this i said having spoke to the people at football manager during some alpha access they assured me the graphics were being looked at but a time on date on those improvements is still unclear and ultimately that leaves me incredibly frustrated so it's not something they're unaware of and that's something i think is important to say but again the time frame on that i don't know like we've, we've talked about women's football before if there's a time to do it like because we mentioned it in international football if there's a time to redo the, the the graphics and the match engine do it when you're bringing in like a whole new world essentially like that's the, that, that's the point to do it next year i don't want to put too much pressure on the people that's what's attractive next year is a huge year for a lot of reasons if it is to be the, the year i should clarify jack z kev and i we don't know when women's football is we are speculating on the fact that we know it's soon and it wasn't you know it's and, obviously what they said like it's on the way yeah, and, but we don't and, know and, and it wasn't this year so our, our thought is well it could be next year so we're talking about it in, in that sense well i think again i don't want, i don't want the conversation to be, become too conflated because i think again it's been lost a little bit we don't want it to look like fifa we just want it to improve in the same way we would any other feature and i think that's that's a sentence I've said a few times, but I think that's quite a nice way of putting it. Um, but let's talk about Fort Manager more generally, right? We've talked about FM23 quite a lot. If there's one thing you could change, and I want an answer from all three of you, that you could change for FM24 or or, or for this game, like if there's one thing you don't like about 23 that you want to change, or, or, or if there's something you want to add, which isn't graphics, we'll put something else, or isn't set pieces, uh, what would that thing be? Jack, we'll come to, we'll come to you first um this is a genuine actual feature suggestion which i will be sad is not if it's not in the game next year now i'm it's saying gonna, it publicly it's gonna say something stupid Go um on. no i'm not i, I want I the ability to snapshot my squad so there's a button i can hit and i can do it for an individual player and it takes a snapshot of that player in that moment in time and then down the line when i want to compare a player i can compare them against themselves in a previous year so i might have an 18 year old i sign and it's really nice when you click on a player development and you see all the graph and all the green arrows it's like, oh they've gone from a 12 to a 15 but actually being able to visually say here's how they were at the end of one season and here's how they were five years later is really cool 
And when you're 20 years into a save game, you could look at your deep line playmaker who started with you at the club and compare him to his protege who's replaced him, who's coming to the end of his career. And I think just more contextual stuff like that that allows you to compare players against one another outside of, you know, how they are exactly in the game at that moment would be a really good change. And it existed in FM Mobile a few years ago, this change. I don't know if it still does. You know, you can print screen, right? Well, yeah, but it's nice to be able to do it in game, isn't it? That's right, like, right, the, right. the ability. I think it'd be just a really cool feature. And if you could compare players statistically at the end of a season, yes. you know, okay, this is how many goals yeah. our squad had and who, who our top goal scorers were this year. Can compare it to a previous season. Yeah, the option of like storing more data, I think, would be like if you want to do that, I think would be wicked. Careful, we'll come to you. You've got, you got. I'm giving you the choice, but you can do whatever you want. What do you want to do to Football Manager? I um, I'm sure there's a business reason why they don't do this. But I'm putting my old man who's been playing for 25 years hat back on again. And I wonder, just in terms of um, the improve, uh, general improvements to the game and managing the expectations of the player base, whether there's an argument to go back to the old naming convention that they used to use on Championship Manager, where you'd have Championship Manager 2, for example, would come out. And then the next year, you'd get Championship Manager 2, 97, 96, 97. And then the year after, it's 97, 98. And then every three or four years, you get Ooh. the big new update oh. title, which is the new game. It looks completely different. It's where all the new features are. Oh, this year, Championship Manager 4 is coming out. That's going to be completely different and new. And it looked different and it felt new. And then you knew you'd have two or three years of the yearly update, which just refines it a little bit. Obviously, you have the squad updates and the promotions and relegations and the odd little refinement and maybe a minor new feature here. But you knew the big features were coming when you got the big new title update. Ever since they changed over to Football Manager, it's just been the years, which I guess is to kind of give the impression that none of these are just data updates. It's a new game every year. But then you get the backlash like we've had this year. And I wonder if you manage those expectations differently and you say, right, well, yeah. next year, Football Manager 2 is coming out and it's going to be completely different. Yeah. Blow their is minds. That, is that something we'd all... Sorry, I should have asked this about your feature, Jack, but I mocked it with print screens. Uh, is that something we'd all, we all think would help? Like, uh, from a creator standpoint, does it help? From a developer standpoint, would it help? What do we think? I think it helps a lot. I mean, this, this goes along with the sort of thing I'm talking about where a yearly sports game, you just don't have the ability to make enough updates to warrant I mean, no other game is, releases yearly except for apparently call of duty recently right but <laughs> for like, about the last you, 15 you, years re <laughs> yeah re re releasing a game every and people have complaints about call of duty not improving enough so i mean it that's holds a, true that's like you, you just don't well. have the ability to improve that much just quickly call it one year later. call of duty of all companies i didn't think we talked about them during this, <laughs> during this video <laughs> um but they are taking a two-year gap for potentially this very reason they are for the first time in 15 years as jack mentioned they are this the game that is coming out this november or late october is the game for two years so even having gone thought, that as well they've had two or three different dev teams alternating years yeah it's weird so with a lot of time games, to spend right? on games yeah I, i'm someone who's always been a bit of a defender of the whole idea of every year you know you get a big feature year then a year of refinement or a two years of refinement because i understand from a game dev perspective it's frustrating when you put a year's worth of work into stuff and people go doesn't look like it was a year's worth of work and i think a lot of that frustration is people um perhaps want to sorry my phone has just started going off and it's distracted me that'll be that'll be si saying they're, they're, they're going to be like don't, don't yeah, reveal the developer secrets but, but, do you want to carry on go on um yeah sorry i've hung up on my brother who tried to call me sorry bro um, <laughs> um it, doesn't it's care about the graphics jack right he doesn't he care. doesn't he's, he's, doesn't care. he's asking when it's out on playstation <laughs> um, <laughs> um it's one of those uh it, it, it's one of those things right where as a game dev you don't want your game to be viewed as a 0.5 like i've been in that but but like i've worked in game development for eight years like when you work on a project for like a year you crunch hard for it potentially end and you're working away and it goes out to the public and people go meh it can be a little bit demotivating but i feel like so much of it can be managed by expectation management i understand why from a marketing point of view you don't really want to start labeling games as a big refresh because the ones that aren't the big step forward, people feel like they can pass up on, right? And especially with a game like Football Manager, I wouldn't want to lose modability of the game where we can't have community-made data updates and stuff because the reality is if you were going to start selling you know, yearly updates where every few years it's just roster updates, you probably have to lock down so much of that other stuff. But I think 
when you're marketing video games, like so much of it is just about managing the expectation of um, your audience. And I think a lot of things that would help football managers if they just came out with a rough roadmap. Because I think we all play the game right, but we don't really know what the future of football manager looks like, bizarrely. And I'm not asking for yearly features, but just being able to say, these are the principles, these are the things we're working on. In the same way they announced, hey, we're working on women's football for the next few years. If there is stuff that they could come out and say, and, you know, basically, in a way, manage expectations, I I think that would help massively. And maybe there's reasons why we can't have a new set piece thing or a new national team training thing then tell us yeah it would be helpful not to expect it this year my, one of my other favorite games is civilization and they will bring out civilization 6 and then a year later you'll get the major dlc for it which costs nearly as much as the full game so the developer aren't losing out on that income each year but it's add-on stuff it's new stuff to add in that can be your date updates and your set piece fix comes in the next year and then the next year you get the next dlc and you know it's going to be four or five games between the major titles but anyone who's serious about playing civilization is still buying all those dlcs when they come out they're still spent i've spent as much money on civ in the last four years as i've spent on football manager because i i think i'm gonna flip a point that you mentioned to what you're saying i think dlcs wouldn't work with a football manager crowd but you don't call it a dlc you just call it the season update what about the new season ad? Yeah, call it the season update. Yeah. Okay. That, that, that's got a chance, but it, like if they tried they to gamify it too much with for the DLC, it wouldn't appeal for them. Guys, I've got it. Subscription model. I, 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 I stared away from saying that when I was talking about this. <laughs> I think the important thing to say as well, I'm sure there are people at SRI <laughs> who are watching this who are very, you very frustrated at everything that we're saying. Oh, because yeah, they know reasons. why they're not doing this because they the, deliberately the, 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 the changed away from doing this. Exactly. There are reasons why the game is marketed as it is, why the game is released yearly in the state that it is. There will be guidelines in place. There's restrictions on resources, right? And all these limitations. We are just for people who want to play the best game possible. But, but, and and I'm we're just defend, spitballing here. I'm going to defend us a little bit. We also, you mentioned it earlier on, we get a ton of feedback over the last eight years. Our lives is to, is to know what's going on in Football Manager and hearing about Football Manager... Which I, and, I'll, and I'll come back to the point I made before, Z. If you could get, if you could add something or bring something in, what what is the thing you would want that isn't there right now? And you can't say graphics or subscription models. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's subscription model is going to be in my grave uh, in a hundred years. If you let now. me do it, the... if, if, if I, if I yeah. be in the network game, can I do your can I do your stone? <laughs> my stone, yeah, that'd be perfect. Here lies the originator of subscription <laughs> model football manager. Yeah. Oh. We're all laughing, but Game no, Pass that... is a thing now. So, you know, there is a subscription yeah. model for football manager. Yeah. True. I, I think it's crazy that given that football manager is so obsessed with the preservation of stories of players, that there is just no way to see all competition statistics on players. Like, I don't know. This is a pet peeve of mine. It's a smaller thing than both of you guys mentioned. But having the ability to look at you know when you go into a player's history and it just shows you the league well they, they've changed that so it says total appearances at the top this year and i was thinking they've done it they've made it so all competition stuff in it no it's still just the league games even though it says yeah total okay okay I was, I was like wait maybe this just <laughs> no, happened no, in the beta and i didn't know about it <laughs> now yeah so they like especially when you do the stuff that football managers really made for which is like you're playing in iceland and you're trying to win the champions league or something and yeah, the league doesn't really matter that much. And what really matters is what happens in Europe and stuff. I would love to have the ability to switch the view and have a presentation where you can see all competition statistics instead of just league statistics. But because I figured that might not be enough, I think another cool thing uh, would be if you save a player's history. So any player that's played on your club, it saves some highlights as well. You're still in my uh, features, from their That was my feature. To add on to your, oh, wait, really? <laughs> to add on to your features, can I also, you know, they've got the new, I forget what it's called, which is bad, isn't it? The thing at the end of a season that you get to see on the that dynamic day. Dynamic the, the manager time. Yeah. Yeah. The fact I can't add stuff to that myself is like, why is the timeline not always visible? And why can't I put stuff that I want to put, whether it be a signing of a player or a goal that was scored by a certain player at a certain point, that was mm. a big moment. Like that's... It feels like it could be a really cool feature and it's not right now. And it's certainly not a headline feature, which again, we, we could have got into a whole debate yeah. about what's headline and what isn't. Um, I'll, 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 can I have a go? Can I do it? 
Please. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I know I didn't get the what memo. Would you like to see? Ben? Well, I know I didn't get the memo about the dark clothing, but I at least want to be able to do my own feature. Um, <laughs> uh, mine's sort of, it's kind of obvious. There's two. I'm going to do two. I'm going to cheat. Uh, first, I want to be able to pin things on the sidebar. So I want to pin whatever I want on the on the sidebar from anything, whether it be club, team, league, whatever that's not there. Um, but obviously, I think there is. There's an obvious answer from the show, showdown guy. Uh, I think there was huge scope for online still. And obviously nothing was done this year because there was a major update last year. And there is still... I look at FPL with, with 10 million players and I think that's the player base that would be interested in some sort of football manager live or football manager online mm. type game mode. Um, and I would love to see... Football, I know football manager went there a little bit and came away from it and then went there again and came away from it. But we never really got to grips with it in this country especially. So... I, I, I still think there is a there is a world where online football manager can coexist with single player football manager, um, and I think all of the things we're talking about will also play a part in that. Like graphics, especially like if you've got an online mode that needs to look like a modern day online mode, frankly, and doing it before then almost isn't worth it. But yeah, that's I would love to see can, that. Can I just say you described last year's online stuff as a major feature. Yeah. I feel like that really gives us an idea of where our expectations are at. Because don't get me wrong, there's loads of quality of life options and nice yeah. little additions. In any other game, what was added there would not be considered a major feature. It was for Football Manager. That's, that that, that, of, that's exactly yeah, that's, my that's point. The, yeah, that's the thing. It was, a, it was a major change for Football Manager. And I kind of knew at that point that we weren't going to get anything this year because there was a big change last year. Who knows, next year, fingers crossed. Mm. Um I'm gonna sort. Of, we're, gonna, we're gonna wrap up, boys, because we've we've gone on a lot of things. If I can, if I can step in right before still got, we, we, got, we still hit still got that five train. ten minutes, but you can, you know, you, can, you carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it, this isn't gonna take long. What I was just gonna say is on the major feature updates. If I was not making content around the game, I would not buy it every well, year. Well, thank you for that. You, you you've preempted what I was gonna say. I was gonna say. Oh, okay, okay. Right. Is FM twenty three worth buying this year? Well, go to the Zealand Channel, and I can predict his response. Well, I, when I used to not make content and just play the game, I bought FM14 and then I bought FM17. I, I used to tell people like, we'll buy it every three years. Because if you buy it every three years, this kind of lines up with what, you know, uh, Lelujo was talking about in that. Yeah, <laughs> thanks for the nod. Yeah, um, <laughs> uh, yeah well, Lelujo was talking about where he says, well, then, then they would do like Championship Manager 2 and 3 and it would be every three years. So I went okay, if I buy it every three years, then that's going to be a huge update. And I didn't want to give up on my save anyways. Uh, so is do I think that Football Manager 23 is worth buying over 22? I didn't think 22 is necessarily worth buying over 21. I When I made a video uh, talking about whether you should buy 22, I said, look, if you're into analytics, that's really the reason to buy this game. If you're not super into analytics, then there's no real reason to to upgrade to 22. Mm. Now, if you're on 21, I do think 23 is a worthy upgrade. Yeah. And for me personally, I hated the way scouting worked before with an increasing intensity because it just it seemed to occupy me being a tweaker, right? It seemed to occupy more and more of my time. I'd get 50, 60 reports in my inbox and I'd have to go through them uh, because my OCD would mandate that I had to go through. I, I don't need this disapproving head <laughs> shape. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, and so I would I would have to go through them and put them on my shortlist and everything. And so the scouting update has at least saved me a lot of time. And I feel like I'm flying through the game a lot faster, relatively speaking, relatively. Um, so I to me, if I if I knew that and I had 22 and I was in a private setting, I would actually upgrade to 23. But if you didn't scout as intensely as I did, I don't think like I, I I mean it's in the beta right now, but I don't I don't think it's it, it, unless you're super into the the way the match engine looks or the scouting was driving you crazy. Why would you Why would you buy the new game? Yeah. Kev, I mean I've always bought it every year forever, and I will always put a couple of thousand hours into it even before content creation. For me, thirty quid is worth it just to get that season's posh squad and have the leagues right. I mean, it's yeah. again, I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I am the full on nerdy obsessive who has played it his whole life and wouldn't ever stop and would just buy it every year, even if it really got really, really, really rubbish. I'd just still keep buying it because I can't stop. So I, yeah, for me, oh, I, I, I just want, I think, I think it's important to say for the, for the viewers at home, Cal hasn't paid for it for five years. Uh, Jack. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> near I, I feel like I feel like I fall into a similar boat actually to Kev, where I'm I'm someone who bought Football Manager every year. I probably would buy it every year. The way that I view just games in general is if I get a pound per hour of entertainment, I'm kind of happy with my purchase with a video game. You know, be it a Call of Duty, be it a FIFA. If I get a pound per hour, that's me done. So if I get 30 hours of fun out of a 30 pound purchase of a game, I'm happy. Football Manager is a game where every year I'm going to sink in a few hundred hours. If you're someone who picks up the game, starts a save, plays a season and a half, then just drops it, maybe picks up at the end of the football season or when there's a football tournament going on, I don't think you need to run out and buy the new game. If you're on the fence, the game's available for what I think is a pretty reasonable price, but it is going to be on Game Pass, so you can try before you buy. They do a demo every year. But I feel like if you're someone who just falls off the game, gets every year, I don't think there's a massive reason to go from 22 to 23. What I would say is if you're someone who's on 21, I think there probably is enough upgrades to justify the upgrade. Mm. Can someone ask me if I think... Someone, can someone ask me if do I you, think... Do you think, Ben... Yeah. It's worth buying FM23 in only, its beta form. You know, it could be completely use, different in a yeah, week. I do, Jack. And I, if they want to, FM23 Benji at checkout is the only place and the only code you could <laughs> use when buying the game. And it's a fantastic game. Uh, I think you should, if, if they put all four cameras up here, yeah. I think that if you're watching this video, you should close your eyes and put your finger on the screen yeah. and then just like randomize. Yeah. And then whoever you end up pointing at when you open your eyes, that's whose code you should Okay, use. Chris, full screen, <laughs> full screen me, Chris. Full screen me. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> my trust me. Uh, no, I, I was, I, I'm actually, I'll do, a, I'll do a serious answer. Uh, as much as that was hilarious. Um, I think it's important to consider the fact that if, yeah, if you're playing it for more than three, 400 hours and you look at 22 and you've got those amount of hours, then you're probably someone that's going to buy it anyway. You're probably going to play it anyway. If you're someone that is unsure and you're maybe even new to the game, you can probably like you can probably miss this year and not miss too much. Um, even though the match engine improvements, I think we would all agree, are pretty good. And it's and it's again, I mentioned it earlier on. It's a big deal for us to make this type of video because it's not a video we've ever felt the need to make before. But I think we are kind of responding to to fan reaction of, of the game this year. And again, I, I, it's important for us to say not because I'm worried about what the staff at Football Manager would think or like access to the game we would have. But there are still people that work all year on a game. Whether we like it or not, we do have a respect for those people that work hard on it. And I, I implore people that have opinions about the game and leave comments on this video and leave comments replying on Reddit and other places. Like, you might not like some of the people behind Football Manager, but I, ultimately you probably still love the game. And it's very easy for me to say, having met them on, on numerous occasions, there's nobody in that studio that doesn't care. And the idea that they don't care is is incorrect. Now, whether they care about the right things or the things that I think they should care about or the things that I would care about, that is maybe a conversation. And I think we could all agree that there are things that they focus on that wouldn't be our focus. That That's, I, I think that's the fairest way of putting it. And again, this doesn't come from a place of we hate you all. This comes from a place of we care about this as much as you do. And hopefully in this video, at least that's come across. Um, boys, thank you for joining me. I thought this has been a, a good, productive conversation I hope when's, you when's episode it. two well if well, look, if this gets ten thousand likes we'll do the network <laughs> game again that's how much i'm prepared to bring this back jack oh, um sorted easy i'm just throwing uh, ten yeah. thousand accounts uh, just a twenty thousand i'll just i'll just should reply it to the, the graphics tweet and we'll get there in no thank time. you that's what, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what we need if you could just blow on it it probably works these days um but yeah thank you for joining me jack thank you for thank you for hanging out Thank you. No, good to have these kind of dialogues. I think it's good to just have a forum to chat like this. We have these discussions behind the scenes, you know, fairly often. And sometimes it's nice to be able to I guess, speak what's on our mind in a forum like this because this doesn't often happen. Yeah. Kevin, it's always a, it's sometimes a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Ben. It's been a delight. <laughs> yeah. It's a shame Clayton didn't pick up. So here you are. Uh, and Z, let this be a lesson to you. If you're not careful, you become Jack, then me, then Kevin by the end. So I like I a Pokemon want... evolution <laughs> line, aren't we, across? You really just like the yeah, evolution of like football evolution. manager. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, but thank you, Z. Oh. It's, it's always good to. And oh, the horror. By that man, a pair of horror. <laughs> what an insult. But no, Z, yeah, it's, always, it's always good to get your time. And you're on time today. So that was, that was, the, I was. the happiest yeah. thing. I that, that's how you know i really was i was looking forward to this so thank you for having me yeah we'll uh, be back soon again if you want us to do another one of these and you've got questions that you'd like us to answer get those in the comments i'm sure we'll all be looking at them to see what you think and uh, i will say we'll be back again soon but i don't know if we will be wave everybody bye everyone here's to a year football manager he zoomed in oh my god oh, he's horrifying. <laughs> that, that, that could be you, <laughs> that could be you. <laughs>